بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي ليس لأوليته ابتداء ولا لأذليته انقضاء وانحصرت الأوصاف عن كنه معرفته وردعت عظمته العقول والذي لا تواري عنه سماء سماء ولا أرض أرضا ثم الصلاة والسلام والتحية والإكرام على سيد البطحاء سيد المرسلين والأنبياء أب القاسم محمد المصطفى اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعلى الجوهرة القدسية البتول العذراء سيدة النساء فاطمة الزهراء وعلى بعلها أمير المؤمنين وبنيها الذين أذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد لا سيما على بقية الله وحجته الكبرى الذي بيمنه رزق الورى وبوجوده ثبتت الأرض والسماء ولولاه لصاحت الأرض بأهلها واللعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم أجمعين من حين عداوتهم إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم تحادو تحابو سلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We were discussing the various values of Quran and Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam on the Thursday nights and tonight inshallah I would like to talk about the concept of hadiyya and gift in Islam Hadiyya uh, means that a Muslim brother gives something as a gift. And the purpose of this, uh, this sort of giving away of gift is to seek uns and nearness becoming familiar with each other and endorsing our muhabbat, mawaddat and love towards each other. Strengthening the bond of love between the Muslim community. This is the purpose of giving the gift in Islam. And the fiqhi the ruling on Islamic jurisprudence is that it is mustahab in Islam and uh, uh, it is mustahab in the case where the qast and the need from hadiyya is uh, is a clean and the pure uh, intention so clean and pure intention means that our entire purpose of giving is showing our respect to that mu'min and to strengthen our love-based relationship with the mu'mineen. There is no other interest involved. So this is in the real sense ikram and respect of a mu'min. That's the purpose. If the qast is, the niyat is pure, this is where the hadiyya and gift has its wazn and value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we do this thing with the niyyat, it will become ibadat and worship. So, first the benefits. Let me discuss a few benefits, benefits of hadiyya in the eyes of the ahadith of the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. And then we'll come to um, some of the instances where 
uh, yeah, hadiya is forbidden. We are not supposed to give or accept the hadiya. And then we'll talk about some of the stories. So first, the benefits. The hadith of the Prophet, which I recited in the beginning, this is from Furu al-Kafi. So, uh, al-Kafi, Shaykh al-Kulayni, rahmatullahi compiled the book. So it is al-Usul min al-Kafi. It has um, um, discussions, hadith about the belief system. And then it has uh, Rawdat al-Kafi. And then it has al furu min al-Kafi, which has a hadith related to the furu al-Din. In Farsi, they have translated it as usul al-Kafi. That's how they have write it, and it's in four volumes. So what is, in Farsi, they have mentioned usul al-Kafi in four volumes. Actually, it's al furu min al-Kafi. If you look at the original Arabic version of Fiqhatul Islam, Kulayni, Rahmatullah alayhi, that's al furud min al-Kafi, which relates to akam of the furud deen. So here the Prophet has said, tahadu, tahabu, which means that give gift to each other, so you will end up loving each other. Tahadu, fa'innaha tuzhib bidlaga'in. Give gift to each other, because it takes away, it removes the hatred. In the heart, people, some people have hatred towards each other, and giving gift to each other removes that hatred in the heart. This is one of the benefits, one of the ways to, uh, to treat the hatred. If you find somebody has hatred against you, this is one of the solutions that we give some gift for the sake of Allah, not for any other benefit. So, hadiyya brings about love, and hadiyya, the second benefit, it removes the hatred in the heart. In the Mu'min community, we are not supposed to have hatred against each other. We may be upset, but our anger should not convert into hatred. Hatred in Islam, in Farsi we say kine. Daghina or Hikd in Arabic. So this Daghina or Hikd should be for the enemies of Ahl al-Bayt Among the Mu'mineen, we don't have hatred in the heart. We are anger. We have anger against somebody. That's a different thing. But we should not convert the anger into hatred. <coughs> hatred phenomena is only for the enemies of Ahl al-Bayt. So another hadith from the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam where he says that ajibu da'i wa'udu al-marid wa aqbilu al-hadiyya wa la tazlimu al-muslimin. This is from Kitab al-Amali of Shaykh Tusi rahmatullah alayhi. So Prophet says in this hadith that Respond to the caller. So someone invites you. Let's suppose a mu'min invites you for his place, his come over. Accept the invitation. We Responding positively to the invitation, which means if a mu'min person or a Muslim person invites you, we should accept it. Accepting the invitation of a, of a person who is calling you. This is a lot of sawab. We open the fast, right? We open the fast upon the da'wat and invitation of a mu'min. If it's not a wajib fast, we are not even supposed to tell the person and open it. And this is the, you get more sawab than fasting. He gets more sawab than fasting as well. He who is inviting you. So both of them go get more sawab. So just imagine responding to the call of a person who is inviting you for food and you you break your fast without telling him that I'm fasting will be, give you more sawab than fasting. So how much would be the sawab if a person responds to the call of the fellow Muslimin who are crying for help? Man sami'a munadiyan yunadi yal al-Muslimin 
whoever prophet says whoever heard a caller that means a muslim person calling him for help asking him for help and he didn't respond to him but he's a muslim and he's not a muslim so this is what imam khomeini radhiyallahu anhu used to say when people were forcing some people were forcing him to accept the ceasefire with saddam he used to say he used to read this hadith of rasulullah i heard myself uh, you can find that video on the youtube where he said don't you hear the voices of those thousands and thousands of people in the prisons of saddam don't you hear their voices doesn't the hadith of rasulullah apply here man sami'a munadiyan yunadi ya lil muslimin whoever hears the muslim person calling a person calling for help and he didn't respond to him is not a muslim so these all those people in the prisons are they not calling for help why should we stop the war so responding to the call of a muslim is a lot of sawab in islam we open the fasting for the call of a regular muslim person what about those who are in urgent need responding to their call is a lot more sawab there was a narration imam al hasan alay salam was doing itikaf was doing the tawaf and one person comes to imam al hasan alay salam and said i need some money to pay off my loan wallahi ma asbahu wa indi shay imam hasan alay salam said i swear to allah uh, this morning i don't have anything i mean i don't have no money in other words to pay and nothing so he said okay but if you can go with me if you can go with me and at least talk to that lender so he can give me some more time you can borrow some time for me from the lender of the loan imam hasan when he heard that he uh, left his tawaf in the middle he was doing the tawaf of kaaba and this person met him during the tawaf and they started to talk with during the tawaf imam hasan alayhi salam quit the tawaf in the middle and started to walk outside the al masjid al haram and one person you know saw imam alayhi salam going so so he left the tawaf obviously qada aw hajat al mu'min is more important than doing the tawaf so he leaves the tawaf in the middle and on his way when he was he was leaving he saw imam al hussein alayhi salam so he said why didn't you ha- ask abi abdullah he said he was busy in itikaf imam hassan alayhi salam said if he if he if he help you it would have been better for him than doing itikaf for one month the kaf is for 3 days in islam right that's the you can extend it for more but basically for another 3 days and another 3 days and another 3 days we usually people do it for 3 days only so imam hasan said if he imam if you that means if you asked imam hussein in other words and he helped you out so it would have been better for him than doing it kaf for one month So is coming back to my point responding positively to the call of a mu'min helping him out in his need a lot of sawab huge sawab in islam so more than your prayers more than your fasting more than your hajj more than your ziyarat of imam al hussein alayhi salam which is the biggest mustahab you know this one has more sawab helping out a fellow mu'min brother wa'udu al-marid and pay a visit to the sick person iyadat paying visit to the sick person wa aqbilu al-hadiya so you give away the the hadiya the gift wa la tadhlimu al-muslimin and don't do zulm towards the muslims zulm is divided into three types in islam zulm on nafs doing zulm on ourselves zulm against allah which means shirk and zulm 
towards the people, al-nas, which is various types of zulm. So, uh, zulm al-nafs, a person performs harams, it's easy to be forgiven. It's a personal infiradi, individual in nature. It's istighfar is also easier. I didn't harm the Islamic ummah, right? I just harm myself. Tawbah is also very easy to do. No one else involved. I didn't harm the ummah. I did not, uh, you know, harm Imam Sahib al-Zaman salam and his walayat and didn't support his enemies either or strengthen them. But, but the zulm ab against Allah is shirk, which is not forgiven, and the zulm against the people relates to the hukuk and nas, which also Allah does not forgive until they forgive. So it's very important to take care of that aspect. Another benefit that we learn from uh, another hadith, uh, there's another point which, is, which we learn from this one, the uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, min, min takrimat al-rajul li akhihi al-muslim an yaqbal tuhfatahu wa yudhifahu bima indahu wa la yatakallaf lahu shay'an. It's from the dignity of a person and honor of a person that he mm, uh, towards his fellow Muslim brother that he accepts his gift. Accepting the gift from a fellow Muslim brother is part of the respect. And he gives away the gift from what he has. Uh, whatever that person had, that much money, he has billions of dollars, he gave you some gift, whatever, you accept it, you give, from, you give away gift to him from whatever you have. You have few pennies, whatever, Less you give it from what you have. That's okay. You know, within our range. Don't end up into zahmat and hardship for the sake of him. Islam doesn't encourage anybody to end up in this kind of hardship. You borrow money from others, for example, to pay him a very expensive gift. No. You just given according to whatever is your social status. That's fine. Even having takalluf means ending up in hardship. Takalluf in Arabic means you end up into a hardship for the sake of someone. So that is not encouraged even for hosting a guest. Uh, when you host a guest, that's not the subject of my speech, but uh, you know, inshallah, some other time. But if you are hosting a guest, Islam doesn't ask you to end up in hassles, and it's not appropriate for the guest to cause hassle. Whatever is available in the house should be presented to the guest, and that should he should eat, and there should be no hardship on anyone. So, also in uh, uh, the hadith of Amir Mu'min alayhi salam, this is in Wasail al Shia, where he says, Ud man la ya'uduka. Pay a visit to the one who doesn't pay a visit to you. You give gift to the one who doesn't give gift to you. So these are, you know, uh, basically makarim al This level of goodness, um, obviously it's not wajib, but it's makarim al It's the highest moralities, uh, highest moral behaviors that we do good towards those who are not doing good towards us. That's how Ahlul Bayt and Islam used to do. Now, the nataij, uh, uh, so this is, uh, these are some of the benefits we get from giving the gift to each other. Now, which gift is considered to be the best? I will come to that later. But first I want to mention those of the gifts which we are not supposed to accept. So is a, mm, when we perform a good deed for someone, yes, suppose you help out some mu'min, you provide a job to him. For example, you did something good for a mu'min. When you are providing a good service towards a mu'min, don't receive a gift in lieu of that service. This is condemned. This is bad. In the hadith of Rasulullah, according to this narration, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, Allah, 
من شفع لأخيه شفاعة فأهدي له هدية عليها فقبلها منه فقد أتى بابا عظيما من أبواب الربا Whoever performs shafa'at, you do some good thing, some good uh, help for your fellow brother, and then you are given a gift and you accept it. So you did some good service and you accept a gift. This is, narration says, it's uh, you are getting, now you are reaching a door of the door of riba and interest. So we should avoid receiving gifts when we are doing good things to somebody. You know, This is not a good practice. Uh, when we are doing good things, let's leave it on Allah. He will reward. We are not supposed to neither accept uh, or expect gifts from others at that time. Uh, in Tafsir Nurul Saqarain, uh, about this ayat of Holy Quran, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 42, Samma'una lil kathibi akkaluna lil suhti. So now these people who uh, listen to you a lot so that you they can deny you and they eat the haram, mal, and money a lot. Akkaluna lil suhti. Eating, they, they eat the haram money a lot. So this eating the haram a lot in the tafsir of Imam Raza alayhi salatu wasalam, he says that akkaluna li suhut is that huwa rajul yaqdi li akhihi hajatan thumma yaqbal hadiyatahu. A person, Imam Raza alayhi salam, includes this thing in akkaluna li suhut, those who eat haram a lot. He includes this as well that somebody fulfills the hajat of a fellow mu'min brother, in other words, and then he accepts gift from him. So at that time, we are not supposed to accept gifts from each other. Let's do it for the sake of Allah, without uh, bringing the material interest in the middle at that time. Um, so this is, uh, one person came to the Holy Prophet and said, I have some position, and now because of his position, the people are giving gifts to him. So is it gift or is it rishwat? So he could not draw a line between those things. Prophet said, before that position, were the people giving you the gifts? That means if those gifts were not given to you before you had that position, that means it's rishwat. If it's a bribery, if the people were giving you the gifts, if the people were giving him gifts before he occupied the position as well, then it's okay, it's hadiyah. But if you want to know, you occupy some position and now people are giving gifts to you. So if they were giving gifts to you before you had the position, that's okay. Then uh, now it's hadiyah. But if they are giving only after you occupy the position, so this should be avoided. Likewise, any gift that is conditional in nature, and takes you away from your Iman. For example, the story of Muawiyah, where he was consistently trying to bribe the people by giving gifts, right? He sent this uh, asal, honey, to Abu al-Aswad al-Du'aili, um, famous companion of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He's the one who wrote the first book of Ilmun Nahaf, the Arabic grammar, right? Abu al-Aswad, and uh, he's the one who did the Arab on Quran, and uh, putting the Fatha and Dhamma and Kasra and all the Arab are placed by Abu al-Aswad al duali a student of Imam Ali salam. So Abu al-Aswad is a follower of Imam Ali, and uh, now Muawiyah used to bribe the people first by giving money. And if it didn't, didn't work, then he used to threaten them and kill them. He killed so many. So, so in case of Abu Aswad, Muawiyah sent the honey to his house. He had a small daughter, five, six-year-old girl, 
obviously she's just like a girl, little girl. So these companions, all of them are poor people. Honey was very expensive. Regular people cannot afford buying honey easily. So this girl got honey after, you know, so it may be so long or maybe first time. She ran towards the honey and she was about to eat it. And Abu Aswad said to his daughter, throw it out of your mouth because it's poison. She said, Baba, this uh, honey is not poison. He said, don't you know that the son of Hind has sent that for us to take the Iman away from us? This is poison. So uh, if there are gifts sent with certain strings attached, right, for the some political motives, some conditions which are un-Islamic, which are hurting our values and Iman, then we have to be very careful uh, to about those of the gifts. Uh, uh, likewise, uh, Ash'as bin Qais, he also once he had sent a gift to Imam Ali, right? when Imam Ali was the Khalifa. And Imam Ali obviously rejected that. So these people had their own agendas when they were giving the gift because they wanted their own benefits. So, this is one of the very usual and quote-unquote very so-called civilized ways of bribing uh, and uh, forwarding the agendas of those crooked people. That's how they used to do. So people in power have to be, or in positions, have to be careful about those kind of gifts. Um, uh, it's narrated the best of the gifts. Now coming to the best of the gifts. The best of the gift in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This is in Kanzul Ummal. It's narrated there. The Prophet said, "Inna afdal al hadiyya al kalima min kalam al hikma yasmauha wa yata'allam yata'allamuha, thumma yata'allamuha, thumma yu'allamuha." The best of the gifts is that a person is a word from the uh, statement of wisdom that a person hears and then he learns that and then he teaches that. So learning a bit of wisdom, giving away a bit of wisdom to somebody, that's the best gift. And Imam Ali salam has said, Ni'mal hadiyya al ghurarul hikam. The best of the gift is advice. If you give a timely advice to somebody and to you correct his ruhaniyat, this is the best thing that you can do. Allama Nihawandi rahmatullah has narrated this story that uh, there was a person who went to uh, Jami al Basra, you know, the Jami Masjid of Basra, and there's a graveyard, and he went there to the to the graveyard, and he was sitting there among the graves, and he fell asleep, and he saw in his sleep. Uh, the same graveyard where he is sitting. Angels are coming down from the heavens and they have tabak, they have big trays. Every dead person is coming out of the grave and he sits next to the grave. And angels are bringing those tabak, big trays, and they put it there. Everyone takes away his share and goes back to his cover. And there was a young, one young man who came out of his cover. He was sitting, and the angel didn't bring anything for him. He kept on waiting, waiting, waiting. Finally, nothing was brought for him. So he went, very upset, went back to his cover. So he asked that man, that young person, before he went to the cover, what is this going on? He said, yeah, th these are gifts that the people are sending to the, their loved ones, the marhumin. And so 
no one remembered me. We are supposed to remember our amwat, our dead people, especially on the Thursday night. Uh, you should always remember our parents and our akriba and even the rest of the mu'mineen. And um, you know, every day we should remember them. But at least on the Thursday night, we should do some sadaqa or some, you know, khairat or some tilawat al Quran or some, you know, some kind of khair for them. You can do nothing, you can just send salawat for them, it's a big sawab. But at least we should remember them. So he said, these are the gifts that people remember, their marhumin, so they are sending and angels are bringing those gifts into the cover. But no one sent anything for me, I waited and waited. He said, what sort of relatives you have who are alive? He said, I only have my mother, no one else. But after I died, my mother married. She, now she has another husband, so she's busy in her life, so she didn't send any gift for me. So he said, okay, where do you live? He said, in Basra, I'm, I used to live in this and this place. So he got the address from him, it's all in the dream. He got the address and he went to that place. He woke up, then he went to that place, and he found there was an elderly woman coming out. Uh, he told to that elderly woman the whole story and she started to cry and she brought a pack of gold coins you know, uh, to be given as sadaqa and uh, Allama Nehawandi had mentioned this qissa, this story so this person after a while he visited the graveyard again and then so he saw in his dream the same young man Angels are coming and this time they brought something for him and he became happy and he said, May Allah be radi and pleased with you the way you have pleased me. So these are the hadaya. These are literally the gifts, the salawat, the fatiha, surat al-ikhlas, sadaqa, anything, we good, anything good we do for them, ziyarat of Imam Hussain Islam. Anything we do for the marhumin is a gift for them, which they are waiting for these gifts to arrive. These are part of the khairat. And uh, uh, our, um, there is a story also narrated that uh, Ayatollah Sheikh Ansari Rahmatullah Alayh, uh, when he, he had his student Mullah Akhun Khurasani, Rahmatullah Alayh, the Sahib al Kifaya. Uh, Kifaya is the last book in our syllabus in the Hausa. So, Mullah uh, Akhun Khurasani was the student of Sheikh Ansari, best student, uh, most, you know, uh, prominent student. So, one day he had only one cloth, one shirt to wear. Um, so he washed the shirt and uh, waiting for it to dry up. It didn't dry up. The time of le lesson came. So he has to leave for the lesson. Now what he did, he wrapped up his abba on his, uh, you know, on, on, on over the jubba. So um, and the shirt is not visible. He was not wearing the shirt because he couldn't wear it. It was wet. So he, he sat a little bit away in the, in the dust, in the lesson. So Sheikh Ansari himself was a very poor person. So they can, they can understand. So he realized uh, something like on those lines. So Sheikh Ansari, after the uh, lesson ended, he quickly, uh, Sheikh Mullah Akhun Khurasani, he quickly left. So uh, when he reached his uh, room, Ayatollah Sheikh Ansari came to his own, to his room and knocked the door and he brought two of his clothes for him. He said, these are hadiyya for you and I, uh, uh, you know, uh, I hope you're not going to reject this hadiyya. So obviously these are very Mutabarrik clothes coming from a person like Sheikh Ansari, who is a, one of the greatest fuqaha of our history. The, definitely their 
even their clothes are mutabarrik, has a lot of ma'nawi and metaphysical value in those clothes. Just like Imam Rida alayhi salam, obviously masumin cannot be compared to non-masumin. But Imam Rida alayhi salam, when he gave hadiyah to Farazdaq, it's narrated when Imam Rida alayhi salam used to send hadiyah to his followers, he always used to send the turbat of Abi Abdullah al Hussain along with the hadiyah. Always. This is the best gift that you give the turbat of Abi Abdullah al Hussain to somebody. So Imam al Islam gave this uh, Aba to Farazdaq and said to him that value this because for uh, 1,000 rakats, for 1,000 nights, 1,000 rakats were prayed in this Aba. So he took away that Aba and when he reached from Marv towards Qum all the way back towards uh, Medina, Iraq and Medina. So on his way when he reached Qum, people of Qum gathered around him and they discovered this Abba is the Hadiyah from Imam Rida they, they, they took away, they make pieces of the Dawa and took away from him. And when he was on his way, uh, they were, they were dacoits who looted him. Farazdaq was carrying some money for Imam Rida alayhi salam. And Imam gifted him and this Abba. And so now the coits came and he looted. And, uh, uh, you know, so when they looted, they were reciting these, they were reciting the share of Farazdaq, right? After looting away the money from him, they were reading the, his own share, uh, the same share that Farazdaq had recited in, in front of Imam Rida alayhi salam where Mamun Rashid was also present there and he recited that Qasida Madaris al-Ayat and this Sha'ir was there part of his Qasida and you know Sha'ir, Qasaid, Qasida are the most effective ways, uh, most effective way to send you a message. Maybe this is one of the reasons why saying one Sha'ir in the mud and praise of Ahlul Bayt earns you the paradise. So it's a big sawab in Islam if somebody says one share for Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. So his qasida became famous in the whole Islamic world. It's like a fire in the jungle. The word was spread. So by the time he himself went, is coming back from Marv, uh, you know, towards Medina. Even the decoits had remembered his share. So after looting him, they were re reading his own share. Ara, they were reading the share of Farazdaq Ara, which he said for Imam Rida alayhi salam, that Ara fay'ahum fi ghayrihim mutaqassiman wa aydiyahum an fay'ihim safarati. I see their money being distributed among the rest of the people. The money of Ahlul Bayt, Baytul Mal, obviously is distributed, is controlled by Mahmud Rashid, right? Distributed among the others. وَأَيْدِيَهُمْ أَنْ فَيْئِهِمْ safarati, And their own hands are empty from their own money. This was Farazdaq recited in such a nice share, a nice idea. And uh, uh, so... <coughs> Uh, okay, yeah, so now coming to uh, the Hadiyah, uh, Prophet also gave the Hadiyah, and the Hadiyah that Prophet gave to Hazrat Fatima alayhi salam was the Tasbih of Zahra alayhi salam, which Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam says if there was anything. Better than that, la nahalahu Rasulullah. Prophet would have definitely given it to his daughter. So there is nothing superior than the tasbih of Azza Zahra alayhi salam. That's why Prophet gave this tasbih to Azza Zahra. So she had the wool wool of camel, and she put thirty three knots. 
in the wool of the camel. And that's how she used to read her tasbih over the 33 knots she made on the wool of a camel. Until uh, Hazrat Hamza alayhi salam, Sayyidu Shuhada, whom Prophet mentioned him, called him Sayyidu Shuhada at that time. He became Shaheed in Uhud and later on Hazrat Zahra alayhi salam went to her qabr and got the turbat of Hazrat Hamza and made his, her sibha, her tasbih from the turbat of Hazrat Hamza alayhi salam and used to recite. And once Hassan and Hussein, and I, I will end my speech after this. Once Hassan and Hussein, alayhi salam, they wrote their slates and about khattati, you know, their writing, Arabic writing. And both of them wrote nicely and they brought to their mother to check which writing is better. And obviously both are very good. So, so what she did, the narration says, she, she broke her sibha. In Arabic, we call it in Farsi tasbih. She broke her tasbih. So all the beads were scattered. And she asked them to gather the beads. Whomsoever gathers more beads, his writing is better. That was the way of basically that's what she wanted to, uh, that's the message she gave to them. Uh, in other words, you know, with this thing. So they both, Hassan and Hussain, they started to gather the beads. So they gathered equal and the, and the, and the last bead which was remaining, which was the decisive bead. If anyone gets that one, he will have more. So this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Jibreel and Jibreel strikes his wing on that bead and makes it in two halves. So one half is taken by Imam Hassan and the other half is taken by Imam Hussain alayhi wa salam. So now coming to the end, uh, I'd like to mention this hadith where Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had said that ahabbu Ikhwani ilayya man ahda ilayya uyubi. Because we are talking about hadiyah tonight. Prophet says the most beloved khayru uh, ikhwani ilayya. The best of my brothers is the one who gifts to me my faults. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has no fault. But this is a message for us. This is the message for us. So if when the best of our brothers, we should consider those brothers to be the best of our brothers who gift our gift, our faults, our defects to us. Now the hadith uses the word ahda ilayya. He gives as a gift. So when we are presenting the wrong of somebody, we present it in a nice way. How you present a gift in a nice way? If you're giving gift to somebody, does somebody feel bad about it? No. So you're giving gift. So if we present the faults to the people and we present it in a nice way like a gift, no one will feel bad about it. So the best of my brothers is the one who gives my defects as gift to me. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد يا الله 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 اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفار والمنافقين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين واخذل من خذل المسلمين اللهم انصر واحفظ وأيد علماء الربانيين ومراجع الربانيين لا سيما الولي الفقي قائد المسلمين اللهم انصر جيوش المسلمين وعساكر الموحدين اللهم فك عن الأسراء المسلمين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى وعجل في فرج مولانا صاحب الزمان واجعلنا من أنصاره وأشياعه وأتباعه وأعوانه 
Ijahi Muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. Let's recite the Ayatul Karima five times for um, all the mu'mineen and mustadafeen and mahrumeen and mazlumeen. And the entire Islamic Ummah, especially our mu'mineen in Nigeria and uh, Recently, there are news coming about uh, destroying the grave of the mother of uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Sakzaki, for Allah, and for his release and for the release of all those mu'mineen who are in the jails of Zulm in Bahrain, in Hejaz, in Pakistan, everywhere, for all the mu'mineen who are defending the atabat and shrines of Ahl al-Bayt in Iraq and Sham, for all the mu'mineen in Yemen and elsewhere, for all of them, let's recite the Ayat al-Karima five times. A'udhu billahi minash shaytan ar-rajim amma yujibu al-muhtarra idha da'ahu wa yakshif al-su 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 أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُخْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءِ اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد One سورة الفاتحة for all the shuhada in Nigeria Let's read the 